my name is Deb. Welcome back to Deb Explorers. Today we are at Edinburgh Zoo and we're here for a worldwide premiere of Brick Live Ocean. Brick Live Ocean is basically just these massive, amazing Lego models and they're all based around marine animals and how we can look after marine animals and conservation as well. So there's a lot of awareness going around in the zoo for this as well as these amazing sculptures that I cannot wait to see today. We're here for a past member exclusive preview look just the day before it opens. So I'm really excited to go and see what's around and be one of the first people to see these sculptures. When we entered, we were given a map. This is a map of the zoo which includes every single sculpture that is here in the zoo that you can see made with Lego. They are all built to life scale, which is incredible. We've already seen a manatee. I'll put some footage in here. It was a bit difficult to get because it's in the entryway. It's very busy there with people all just coming in. The event did just start, so it's a little bit manic. I'm going to try find a quieter route to go around the zoo, see what we can see, and hopefully with so many sculptures around the park, it's going to be easier to see some of them. Without me waffling on for any longer, let's go and check it out. This poor little meerkat looks like it's crying. Oh, don't cry, meerkat. You can already see the crowds that are gathering around them, and this is just the beginning. But hopefully because they're spaced out throughout the whole of the zoo, then there's going to be less crowds at some of them. This one's a giant squid, which was built by four people and took 300 hours to build. And a little penguin behind it, which we're hopefully going to see more of on our adventure. There are a lot of them. I mean, there's 30. So though they are spaced out a bit, they're not too far out that you've got too far to walk, which is fantastic, particularly if you've got kids or people with short attention spans. Dinner, 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 ah! Mako shark. Just like that awesome coaster at SeaWorld. He is incredible. Each of the sculptures have little plaques that tell you how many builders, how many hours, and how many bricks that are included in each of these sculptures. Oh, um, for a little fun fact. Even look at the detail of the teeth. So we're going to take a little bit of detour. I feel like I do this all the time. But we're taking a detour because the red pandas are out. And they're one of my favourites. And they are rarely ever out. Oh my gosh. Can't wait to see them. He's in a tree. He's so adorable. Look at that cute little face. I want to get his tail in, it's so fluffy. <gasps> Look at him. Oh, I could just take him home and cuddle him. Hold this one up, and he's quite near the branch. Oh, yeah, so basically, when these branches work, I know I came here for Lego, but I could just stand here all day with these little guys. As much as I could just stand and watch the red pandas all day, we're going to head on and see more of the Lego bricks as well. I just saw the best thing ever. I saw a woman exclaim, oh my gosh, it's real. I thought it was stuffed. We're at a zoo. What do you expect to see? These are incredible and we're heading over to one of my favourite marine animals, the ones I always see at SeaWorld. He is majestic, but he doesn't have his tail. I'm presuming it's under the water that they've built around and that's what we'll go with. So these ones can leap up to six feet out of the water, which is definitely crazy and definitely not the ones that we have in SeaWorld. <laughs> it's called a devil ray and it is, there is 76 1,208 Lego blocks just to create this one awesome ray. That is a lot of Lego blocks. We have a very brightly coloured sailfish. So he took two builders and 320 hours. I suppose some of them must be a lot more intricate than others. Some of them take a lot longer even though they're smaller. But I mean, look at all the colours in them. That is to scale. That is massive. We have another shark. We have a hammerhead shark this time, which just like the sales fish, only took two people to build it. But it's definitely a lot bigger. 
but then I guess a lot of it is the same colors. This big marquee is the marquee where they have Lego bricks where you can build your own animals. This is a brick marquee with what is literally a brick fit that I'm definitely not going to get anywhere near right now. It's very interactive. There's your brick fit to play with. There's some merchandise over in the far end. And you have a photo off as well that you can put your heads through and take some photos. You can also meet and greet with Edinburgh Zoo's penguin that is very friendly walking about. Kind of looks like Pengu. Meep, meep. The orca whale, which only took three builders. That must have taken so long. Yeah, 550 hours that took. This one is on the bottom of the map. So it's got win at Family Pass to Edinburgh Zoo. And how many bricks were used to build a life-size orca? How many bricks? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That is awesome. Well, we're gonna go around, see more of the sculptures, and then maybe some of them will be bigger and we'll be able to judge a little bit better on how many Lego bricks we think are involved in making this one. We're gonna go and check out the penguins. So not only do we have Lego penguins, but we have real penguins as well. Instead of going to Skull Rock, we're going to Penguin Rock. Penguins, penguins. I'm gonna close the door behind us. <gasps> this has changed so much since I was a kid. That or it's just been so long since I was here, I don't know. Look at all the penguins. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> There's something very fishy going on here. Are you going to jump in, penguin? Are you going in? Go, go, go. Come on, you're thinking about it. You can do it. Woo! Edinburgh Zoo, they also have the penguin cam, so they have cameras and a few different exhibits where you can log on online and see what's going on in the animal exhibits. And the emperor penguins over here. He looks like the chief. If you're too nervous to go in the actual arena area with the penguins, there's, you can view from around the entire enclosure. So there's the usual fenced off enclosure. And then there's where we are here. So they have walls with little portholes almost. And you can see the penguins in the other direction which is pretty cool because you can see them really close up from here, especially if they're all hovering near the back. In fact, at some days you may even get a better view here than you do from inside. One thing that I love about Edinburgh Zoo that you don't get in all zoos is that you can also view the penguins underwater. So we're gonna go down and see the penguins under the water as they're swimming. So most of them are above ground right now, but there's a few of them swimming about. You usually see more of them swimming about during the day, especially when the sun's out, because you all want to be in the water. Hidden off from the penguins and the quieter side that less people go to are where the common skates are. Which is a lot more like the rays that I know. And this guy only took 90 hours to build. And he's still almost 20,000 bricks. Probably because of all the colors in him. There's so many animals and I keep getting distracted, but let's go find some more Lego blocks. So a little tip, the Emperor Penguin sculpture is actually inside the jungle food court. So he's not outside like you'd expect him to be. One guy built him and it took 49 hours for one man to build a penguin that guards the food. Doing a good job, penguin. Good job. Just up by the penguins as well, there's a kid's play area, which is very popular today. We found the puffins, which you can actually find on some of the coasts of Scotland as well. Never seen one myself though, not yet. Penguins. That puffin on the bottom looks like he's he's falling off and crying for help a little bit. There's only, I say there's only, there's 41,156 bricks in this. So there must be so many on that orca. And then again, there's a penguin. We found a very happy looking sea lion. It's a stellar sea lion if we're being exact. Look at that little face, he looks so happy. So we're gonna head off. There's one that's all the way up there somewhere. By the way, it's really warm for Scotland. I really need to start learning this. But it's been a while since I was here over the summer months. But we're gonna head all the way up here. There's an African penguin sculpture. 
Not really sure what an African penguin is, but we are going to find out. And then we're going to head in the opposite direction and go all the way up to the top of the park. I always forget how big this zoo is. And then we're going to work our way down. The Malayan tappers? Tapers? I'm not sure. If you do know, comment below. Let me know how to pronounce them. They're very strange, but very lovable looking. They're kind of like elephant cows with orchid ears. So you can see them in their outside enclosure, which they're allowed to go out into. The door is open, but they obviously prefer to come in here and rest for tonight. This is why I keep seeing penguins everywhere, because can you spot all 10 of the rock hoppers? And there's another one in here. Maybe next time we come, we'll do a, a tour of where to find all the rock hopper penguins. But for now, we have the African penguin. What makes them different? So the patterns and the spots on their chest. So maybe when I face, yeah. When you face it face on, you can see the spots in his chest. And the little pink markings over their eyes. There's a turtle by the killer whale. How on earth did I miss a turtle? Hawaiian monks here looks ready for his close up. He is very cute, this one. The Hawaiian monk seal really amuses me because people are just practically running about going, oh, the Hawaiian monk seal! As if that's so obvious that we know what it's called. Because most people would call it a seal, but people just, people make me laugh. <laughs> We've done about half of the zoo now and the rest of the animals are all up this way around the other side. We've only got about an hour left. This is just about a two hour preview event and it is crazy how vast that this park is, how much there is to see, and that's not including taking the time to see the animals as well included. So this is definitely a full day event, but I'm looking forward to going to see more animals. So let's head up this way and see what we can find. We are heading towards the big blue world with the coral reef and all the very colorful exotic fishes here. We have the parrotfish, the moray eel, and the mahi mahi as well. I have no idea how colorful. I mean, they're obviously not neon Lego brick color, but I didn't realize that they were really colorful fish either. We have spider crabs in here, which look a little bit like something you'd find in Stranger Things. I wouldn't like to walk up this path dark. <laughs> Like, when you get to the sun, like, when you get to the sun, that's the car. Don't tell a kid that. These are the yellowfin tuna. And it's really bizarre the way a lot of these sculptures are set out. You'll literally just turn a corner and there'll be some there. Or if you don't turn the right corner, it's so easy to miss some of them. They're just so well blended into the environment. We are just getting higher and higher and further up the zoo. There is a lot of walking uphill now, but there are only two that are all the way up the top of it. All the way up the hill. It is a trek to the top of the zoo, but look at those views. And when the pandas sell in, you're going to have a view with pandas. Like, how awesome is that? So we are all the way up at the top of the zoo now. There should be an octopus and possibly a vaquita up here. I don't know what that is. We'll find out. And then we're gonna head all the way back down where we should see the angelfish, the bottlenose dolphin, the sturgeon, and maybe see that turtle that we missed as well, which I'd quite like to see. There is only about half an hour left before the zoo closes, which considering how big I keep saying, how big this zoo is, it is very, very difficult to do. But we're gonna see if we can get all of these in. We have come so high up. That I don't even feel like I'm at the zoo anymore. I feel like I'm back in a hill track somewhere, honestly. But I'm optimistic that this octopus is along this way. And if it's not, well, I got a bit of exercise. Yes, I could cry for joy. Coming up here was not the wrong way to go. What are you doing today? I'm making a vaquita. So this here is what a vaquita does. And it looks a bit like a miniaturized dolphin. And the reason that probably not many people know what this is, is because there are only around 10 left in the world. One is made of Lego, right here. All the way at the very top of the zoo is the octopus. And he's attached to an anchor. 
If anyone's ever seen a video on YouTube or online somewhere, there's an octopus on a ship and it goes out through this tiny little hole and it like shrinks so small and stretches and then just comes back out the other side. And it's insane, like the little spaces that they can fit through and morph through to get out. And from the top by the anteaters is another amazing view of Edinburgh. Far. Let's go see if we can find some tigers, huh? Oh my gosh, you can see him. He is so majestic. It's like he's just getting ready for his photo shoot. It's almost like he's enjoying having his photo taken. We're just staring people out. Hey. They can walk from one side to the other and go over all the top of this, which is really pretty awesome. To be honest, they probably think that we're the ones that are in the enclosure and they came to see these weird humans who are watching them through the walls rather than them being in it. It's probably why they look at us so funny. My only major issue so far is that you go all the way up this massive hill, all the way up this steep hill for quite a bit, which with children or older people might be a bit tough. And especially if you've got a buggy or a stroller with you, that's gonna be quite hard on the knees. So my only issue is going all the way to the top, to which you get a squid and a vaquita, which are pretty small sculptures. I mean, I guess they've put them up there so that if you don't want to walk all the way up, you're not missing out on one of the main big ones. But I feel like when I walked all the way up that hill, like, reward me with a massive sculpture, please. Okay, we are gonna go all the way back down this crazy, steep, winding hill where we are going to find the rest of the Lego animals. And I really want to do, oh, I can walk it. Let's go walk with some wallabies. Walk with the wallabies. Yay. Enter here. Are we allowed to go through it this time? It opened, so apparently so. I suppose this is one other way to get down. <gasps> There's a wallaby. Hi, wallaby. Look, this is one of the enclosures where you are just allowed to come in with them. As long as you stay on the path, so there's signs just saying, warning, please stay on the path. You know, stay on the path. Don't run after the wallabies, play tick with them. They're not interested. They want to chill out. They want to be by themselves. And this is pretty cool. And I'm the only one in here walking with the wallabies. <laughs> right now, they're all the way over here. They're all just chilling out together. I suppose because it's later on in the day as well, they're just a lot more chilled. Whereas if you came during the day, they're probably going to jump about a lot more. I don't really know too much about wallabies, but next time we come, I'm definitely going to have a look. So see ya. Why not hop around to koala territory? Because it's not open. That's why. But next time Edinburgh Zoo, next time I will come visit the koalas. I am so lost and it's so quiet that it feels like the zoo is closed and I'm not meant to be here or something, which isn't true. There are people, there are lots of people here, but I'm just lost. But now I know where the koala territory is. It's there, behind me. I was so excited to come back and see them. So inside the Padongo Trail where the chimps are kept is where you will find the bottlenose dolphin sculpture, which is under some really nice lighting actually. And this one took two builders, 140 hours, and there are over 22,000 Lego bricks in this one. Yes, I heard it through the ape vine. He just has not a care in the world. <laughs> he looks so relaxed. So all the way up behind the lemurs, we found a sturgeon. And he is absolutely massive. I don't know why I'd think he was smaller. I reckon if I lay down beside him, he would be even longer than I am. That is insane. Now I know how I missed the turtle. He's like practically camouflaged, but he is awesome. Here he is, and with all the flowers around him, no wonder he's more difficult to spot. He didn't take as long to build as I expected. 160 hours with two builders. I would have expected him to have taken so much longer because look at all the detail and the colors in his shell. 
that is incredible. And you just look so serene swimming there among all the plants. I love him. He is so cool. I'm so glad I found him. <laughs> we must have walked at least 5k today between going all the way up to the top up that hill, which was quite a tough walk, to come all the way around the park on, like these sculptures are on every area of the park. They're everywhere. There's not one part of the park you can go to where you're not either going to be seeing a sculpture or on your way to a sculpture which is pretty awesome because it means it's going to cover your entire day and your entire experience of the park which is definitely fantastic my only issue like i said was when we went all the way to the top i felt like i wanted to reward it a bit more by some bigger sculptures rather than some little tiny ones after walking all the way up the top of that hill but considering that's my only doubt that's been a pretty awesome day. I'm gonna come back here another time for sure. I will film my adventures when I come to the zoo for an actual zoo day so you guys can join me in interacting and seeing all the animals and the conservation that Edinburgh Zoo also has to offer. This event starts tomorrow, which is Saturday the 6th of July, 2019, and it goes on through the whole of the summer into the autumn or the fall and goes on until Tuesday the 17th of September 2019. So that is a lot of time. You have like, I don't know, that must be like 75 days, 75, 80 days. I don't know, I go out to Florida next in about 65 days time and then this ends just shortly after it. So it must be about 70 days, but anyway, you have a long time to come and visit. So definitely head out on your summer holidays, come spend your day here, it's open 10 till five, and I do recommend making sure that you have a full day to experience the zoo because there is so much to do, so much to see, and that's without even including the brick live involved in it. So come along, enjoy, I will definitely be back. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that little subscribe button. That will ensure that you are aware of all my adventures for the summer in Scotland and then come the fall out into Florida for all the theme parks and the festivities there. You don't want to miss out, I wouldn't want to miss out. So you definitely want to hit that little subscribe button if you're interested in more videos and joining me along on my adventures. Also, if you've liked this video, make sure you high five that little like button down below so that I know that you have enjoyed it. And as always, I hope you have had a wonderful night and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. If you want to complement your day with some Lego to take home, then they have various animals that you can take home. And these vary from £6 all the way through to 15 for your larger sets and your boxes at the bottom.